Nitric oxide is NO, um, a nitrogen and an oxygen oak together. And interestingly enough, it's um, only been well understood in the last, I would say, 10 years or so, and mostly due to the work of Dr. Nathan Bryan at the uh, Heart Institute in Texas. So one of the things that's been known about nitric oxide for a very long time is that it is largely the control mechanism for dilation of our small blood vessels. And so for, um, for oxygen and nutrients to get to the tissue, our blood vessels need to be dilated slightly so that the, those can get through. Without nitric oxide, the vessels are too small, and so various tissues become where they can't get the oxygen and nutrients they need. Now, it's been shown that most everyone past the age of 40 becomes deficient in nitric oxide. Our ability to make it is very high when we're young, and it goes down like this. And generally, when you pass 40, you get into the area where you have inadequate amounts. So, in addition to uh, have its role in controlling oxygen delivery, is that it tends to control almost every hormone in the body. There's some role that it plays. And so um, uh, if you want to know more about that, you should get one of the very readable books uh, that Dr. Bryan has written, Nathan Bryan. But let's just talk for a minute about what happens when you become deficient and what can you do about it. First of all, Dr. Bryan has developed a lozenge which you dissolve on the top of your tongue and within six minutes you get very high doses of nitric oxide that lasts about eight hours. And so this is a very efficient way to restore nitric oxide to your system. Now, there is another way, another mechanism that is available and that is that um, if you eat certain, um, particularly green leafy vegetables, they contain nitrates, which then, when you eat those, there are bacteria back on the back side of your tongue that can convert, start the process and convert those into, eventually into nitric oxide, assuming that you have stomach acid. So it's a two-step thing. You have to have those bacteria. First of all, we have to eat the green leafy vegetables you have to have the bacteria on the back of your tongue and you have to have stomach acid for that system to work. And of course, a lot of people don't eat green leafy vegetables, a lot of people don't have stomach acid, and a lot of people kill the bacteria on the back side of their tongue by using mouthwash. So it's been shown in studies that have been uh, set up and participated in by Dr. Bryan that using mouthwash can actually increase your risk for having a heart attack, which unless you understand this system, seems counterintuitive. Now there's another mechanism that the body has available. When you consume sulfur, the body deposits it under your skin. When you get into infrared light, there's a cascade of events that happens uh, biochemically that takes and turns the sulfur uh, into uh, cholesterol sulfate, which then gets taken to the inside of an artery and inside your red blood cells. So if we assume that this is an artery and this is a red blood cell, the nitric oxide and the, I mean the cholesterol sulfate in those creates a magnetic field. And so as this red blood cell goes along the inside of an artery, it creates a drag. And it's the drag that makes the endothelium release nitric oxide right into the blood, right where that's happening, which is all along the blood vessel. Well, for that system to work, you have to consume sulfur, eggs, um, onions, garlic, broccoli, that sort of thing. And then you have to get into the infrared light and you have to get have skin exposed to the infrared light because it won't go through your 